Star Trek is complete. Okay, we've got our clearance to taxi. Nose to five, please. That's uh, lowering the nose to our normal taxing position, releasing the brakes. And there we are, rolling okay. forward. Hold clear. All Checking clear. emergency brakes. And, Bill, if we could have the taxi checks, please. Nose and visor. Yes, down five. Checked. Okay, brakes. They're checked back at normal. The cockpit checks are not actually continuous. They're carefully designed in sections to prepare the aircraft for the next stage of flight. Trims. Trims I've checked set for takeoff. Set for takeoff. They're set. It's quite interesting lining up on the runway. We're sitting here on the flight deck 35 feet ahead of the nose wheel. So I have to overshoot the runway centre line somewhat before I commence the turn to line up. A little bit disconcerting until you get used to it. Listen, take the uh, check the line up, please, Spartan. All clear on the approach. Yeah. That's a little bit bumpy ahead there. Yeah. Prepare yourself now for a sequence of events which are unlike any other flying experience. There we are, all lined up and now uh, standing by for our takeoff clearance from Heathrow Control Tower. Heathrow, now, Concorde 189, clear takeoff to 7 right, 210, 15 knots. 189, clear takeoff to 7. OK, we're cleared for takeoff. Everybody all set? Yeah, all set. OK, 3, 2, 1, now. the noise abatement procedure. Three, two, one, noise. Once the aircraft is safely airborne, the engine power is reduced, the aircraft is leveled in order to maintain airspeed. In the terminal area like this, we fly around at 250 knots, and we fly around with the nose and visor dial and fly, keeping a lookout for any other traffic that there may be around. Take off, take off checks complete with the nose still applied. At 2% more, please, Bill. 2%. I'll have Compton set up on my side, please. Compton is the name of a radio navigation beacon. And we're just getting to the point now where I'm going to ask Chris to select the nose and visor up, streamlining Concorde for high speed flight. Chris, could you select the nose and yes. visor up now, please? Coming up. Possibly the sound level on the flight deck has decreased quite a lot. That uh, airflow noise we were getting before has now diminished. With Concorde all streamlined for supersonic flight. Concorde now continues its climb to a point clear of the coastline just southwest of Cardiff. Up the throttles fully. Once the engines have all stabilised, Bill Brown will select the reheats in pairs. First of all, the inboards. There they are, just cutting in. We're going to take a timing on that. And the outboards, please, Bill. And we're now climbing and accelerating with the reheats on. And very shortly, we're going to go through the sound barrier 
And really the only visible sign of it up here on the flight deck is a slight fluctuation of one of the pressure instruments, the rate of climb and descent indicator. And we'll see that doing a little blip up and down the scale of the instrument as the shockwave attaches. We're just hanging just under Mark 1, just for 20 seconds or so. And we're just about to go through the sound barrier. There's the shockwave attaching right now. And we're supersonic. No fuss, no drama. Lovely smooth ride straight through the sound barrier. It's an excellent moment. Now we've uh, got out of the busy phase of the flight. Now we're still uh, accelerating up to Mach 2. We just turned the reheats off a couple of minutes or so ago. You probably felt that. Yeah. And we're now gently drifting up towards Mach 2. Can you take us for a, a very quick guided tour of the systems that are here in the cockpit? Yes, certainly. Now, first of all, I think in general terms, I've got a set of flight instruments in front of me. In the middle, we've got a set of engine instruments. And over there, on the co-pilot side, Chris Norris's side, a, re a repetition of the flight instruments that I've got. Right. Now, the flight instruments consist, obviously, of an artificial horizon, airspeed indicator, compass down here, altimeter there. We're climbing through 44,000 feet at the moment. And a mark meter there, a mark number at the moment of 1.75, already actually well over twice the speed of the subsonics who cruise around at about 0.8 Mach. So we're doing well over a thousand miles an hour already. And unique to Concorde, we've got the position of the center of gravity there. And another instrument that's unique to Concorde is an angle of attack indicator, which is over there. These, as I said, were engine instruments. Chris Norris has just loaded the next uh, menu for the navigation system, and that's what he's doing, checking that. We've got three navigators, one, two, and three, and they're all cross-monitoring each other. And then coming up here is all the controls for the radios, for the autopilots, auto throttles, and the automatic landing. And then coming up here are a whole raft of different things. First of all, the master warning system I referred to earlier, which draws our attention to any problem that may happen in any one of the vital systems, electrics, hydraulics, pressurization, whatever it may be. And I'll just show what that looks like. That's a full house on the master warning. We'd be a bit, bit horrified if we saw that lot on altogether. And then up here, various uh, switchery connected with the uh, flying controls, engine fire handles there, more fire, uh, flying control stuff there raft of different switchery up there, connected with the engines mainly. John, the, the bulk of the trip is behind us now. We're yeah. approaching Washington. What procedures will you now adopt? Well, the first thing is uh, descent and deceleration. Um, and then after that, we've got a subsonic flight for about 250 miles coming in over the eastern seaboard and on to Washington. So it takes just over 100 miles to go from Mach 2 down to Mach 1. That'll be that bit of it out of the way then. We then continue subsonically and we'll then drift down to 39,000 feet, which will be our initial subsonic cruise altitude. And then, of course, once we get down below 10,000 feet, when we're flying over the domestic United States, we then have to decelerate to 250 knots. And as we do that, we'll bring the nose advisor down. And then from 10,000 feet downwards, it's 250 knots until we start bringing the speed back for the final approach. Dallas, approach, Bibbit Concord 189 Heavy at 10,000. Bibbit Concord 189 Heavy at all approach, descend and maintain uh, 7,000. Man, we'll have the nose advisor down and five, please. Speed okay, the advisor's going. So that's the nose, and there's the visor going down. And the nose coming down to five degrees. Reducing to 250. That's our airspeed, 250 knots, about 290 miles per hour. Okay, briefing, any update? No update to the briefing. Taxi turn. Red iron SHS. Red. Air cyber, there's no update. No update to that. Okay. 57 to final. Seats and harness. Lock, lock. Secure. Power off. Harness secure. The power is off. There's the visor. It's down at 5 degrees. Down at 5. Altimeters and the radio alternators, there's no update. We have checked those, yes. approach checks complete. And at the moment we're only cleared to five, so as we approach that, we 
better get further clearance. Alert, one to go. We've got 1,000 feet to go to our clearance level of 5,000 feet, and the auto throttles increase the engine thrust to maintain that altitude. Speedbird 188 heavy, turn left heading of 3 Heavy means large jet, and Speedbird is British Airways. We're on a northerly heading to intercept the runway's directional radio beam known as ILS, instrument landing system. Thank you. And at the moment, we're still under autopilot control with autopilot number one flying it. And we've got the ILS set up on both sides, the captain side and the co-pilot side, and we're just about to intercept the extended centre line okay, of the you. runway at the moment. Speedbird 188, heavy descent and maintain at 3,000. Speedbird 188, heavy descent and maintain 3,000. Three, chat. OK, I'll take the autopilot out, chaps. And I'm now hand-flying it, that's the autopilot out. Speedbird 188, heavy, reduce speed to 210 knots. Speedbird 188, reduce speed to 210 knots. It's a very good auto throttle system, by the way, and I've just demanded uh, a 210 knot intermediate approach speed from it, and the speed's gradually bleeding off now. And we are now established on the extended centre line for the runway we're landing on, and also on the glide slope. Right. 188 heavy is seven miles from the marker. Maintain 3,000 until established on the localizer. Clear for ILS runway one right approach. Reduce speed to one nine or zero knots. Uh, we come down at 190 knots, down to 800 feet above the airfield, and we then dial in on the auto throttles our final approach speed, which today is 157 knots. Ball lock capture, glide capture. And the overshoot height is. Chris now changes the frequency of his radio to that of the controller in the tower. Norris Tower, good afternoon, Speedbird Concord 188 Heavy, for one right. Speedbird Concord 188 Heavy, Norris Tower, runway one right, clear to land, wind 050 at 3. Clear to land, one right, Speedbird 188 Heavy. So we're cleared for an approach. We're fully established on the ILS. All the radio aids have been identified and no problems at all. Have the gear down, please. Speed's OK. Four greens. OK, the gear checks four greens. Nose. It's down a green. Checks. Brakes. Checked. They're normal. Okay, landing check is complete. Thank you very much. OK, I can see the ground quite clearly now. We're just waiting to see the runway lights. Oh, yes, I've just got that coming in sight now at a range of four, about uh, four or five miles. 1,000 feet radio. I agree to the overshoot heights, sir. As we approach 800 feet, that's the point where I shall bring the speed back. That's right now. 800 feet. I'm gently now, under the auto throttle control, bleeding the speed back from 190 knots to 157 knots. All the throttles in, on the glide slope, on the localizer. Glide slope and localizer are the two radio beams informing the pilot about his height and position relative to the ideal uh, runway approach. Thank you. 100 to go. Three hundred feet. Decision height. My director's off. Two hundred feet. Uh, 10, now watch the wingtips. The famous delta wing swirl. Sticks forward, please. Sticks forward. Yes, sir. A real grease. Only dollar star again. 100 knots. 75. 40 knots. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. And we're cleared off the runway. And very shortly we shall be at the arrival gate and disembarking our passengers.